Back in mid-July, I decided that I wanted to go on a bit of a trip up north to visit my friend Caden, who was my roommate at CMU before we both stopped going there. I hadn't seen him since December, and I thought it'd be cool to visit him and check out a bit of northern Michigan. I decided to take my talon and make a bit of a memorable trip of it. I also brought two cameras, my Canon FTQL, which is a 35mm film camera from the 1960s, and a Kodak disposable camera. Some of the photos that came out on the FT didn't turn out very well, which you may see throughout the video. I thought it was cool to bring my Talon because this car was originally sold in Michigan, and to me that's really cool because most older cars in Michigan don't last longer than about 15 to 20 years. And the fact that this car is 25, 26 years old now, to me is really cool. I'd like to think that maybe at some point in this car's life, it too did this same journey up to Northern Michigan. The Traverse City area is a bit of a tourist destination, so it's not completely out of the question. My trip began when I left home at about 5 a.m. I knew I wanted to get an early start because I planned to take a bit more of a scenic route to get to Traverse City. My plan was to go west through Lansing, through Grand Rapids, to Muskegon, and then take US 31 north, which went closer to the west coast of Michigan. This drive added several hours to the time that it would have taken had I just gone the recommended route. On my way west, at around the Lansing area, I ran into a pretty large thunderstorm. It passed fairly quickly, but it still gave me a bit of a scare. I'm just outside Lansing right now. Uh, this is probably the worst of it, this little storm. Supposedly, it's supposed to be done with uh, by the time I leave Lansing, but... kind of scared into going just a little over 70. Uh, I got the cruise on. I don't know if that's really a good idea or not, but the rain already lifted since I started making this video, so maybe we'll be good soon. It's uh, whatever that is, 6.05. All right, see ya. As I approach Grand Rapids, I saw a sign on the side of the highway for the Frederick Meyer Gardens, which I had never really heard of, but I knew it was, this was the kind of thing that I wanted to stop and check out and take photos of if I could along the way. By the time I got there, it was about 7 a.m. and it didn't seem like they were open. So I just took a few photos of the town in front of the gate and kept going. Grand Rapids was pretty cool. I had never really been there at the time. Now I've been there a few times, but I thought it was cool to take a few photos of it as I drove past. I then made my way north on US 31, and at around the Ludington area, I decided that I should stop for fuel because I was worried that as I got further north, 93 octane would be harder to come by. So I stopped at a fuel station in Ludington, and on my way, I came across a fairly intact family video location. Now, family video has been long closed, but this seemed fairly intact with the signage and the glass tower out front. And I thought it was kind of cool that it still served as a symbol of what once was. So I took a few photos with the Talon. As I continued north, I realized that the scenery was starting to change. It was getting more green. And I decided to get off of US 31 and get onto M22 as I got closer to my destination.
washed it the night before I left and then got trapped in the rain for quite a bit of the journey. But this is Frankfurt, Michigan. Apparently that lighthouse needs to be protected. There's uh, Save the Lighthouse posters everywhere, so it's cool. It was on M22 that I realized how enjoyable this drive was really becoming. M22 is one of the main ways to get to Traverse City. It is more of a lower speed limit, curvy road that's a lot more scenic. And I was really loving it in the town. Some of my favorite photos from the trip are from the many miles of trees along the sides of the roads that are just green for miles and miles. It's a very northern Michigan site, and I still miss that. that I was getting very close to the time that I told Caden I was going to be at his house, which is at noon. So I decided to just keep driving and make my way to Traverse City. When I finally made it to his house, I was greeted by the sight of his green Buick Park Avenue. I'm super thankful that he let me stay at his house during my trip there. I'm not sure what I would have done otherwise. At that point, we went out and got lunch, and I was happy to not have to drive after such a long trip there. I definitely wasn't complaining riding in the big comfortable Buick. While we were out, we managed to spot Caden's first car, which he had sold a year prior, which was a green 03 Buick Century. It was still in the same condition that he sold it in, with rusty rockers and Decepticon badges on the fenders. It was really cool to see the two cars side by side. The bottom and top of Buick's lineup in the late 90s to early 2000s. It seems kind of fitting that he graduated from a Century to a Park Avenue Ultra. It's not just a way better car, but this one's also from Florida, so it has literally no rust. Caden had told me about a weekly car show that went on at the local Culver's to him, so we decided to go back to his house and grab the Talon and go out and check what it was all about. I also used this opportunity to meet up with a DSM guy who lives in northern Michigan named Cameron, who I'd been friends with on Instagram for a while. As I understand it, he had bought his car basically as someone's abandoned project. It hadn't run since about 2008 or 2009, and he had just gotten it back on the road. I'll be honest, I forget everything that he said was done to it, but I believe it was slightly built with a larger turbo. We decided to go three deep in his talon as he took us for a ride, and even though he said it wasn't running correctly, to me, it still felt pretty fast. That's sick. And yeah, that's with three people in here. Yeah, it definitely, um, it's definitely faster than my car. Yeah, this is like low. It didn't even seem like you were really getting on it. No, I can't because <laughs> I'll get knocked right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like, so like I said, it went to the two. time 
did used to be a blue 96 Talon TSI all-wheel drive, but at some point in time, it was converted to a 2GB Eclipse exterior. That being said, it was really cool to see two black 2G DSMs, one Talon, one Eclipse, next to each other and compare the differences. I really like my car how it is, but this car showed me just how fun a DSM can be when it's built. After having a bit of fun with DSMs, Caden wanted to take me to a bit of a boat launch slash swimming area with a little parking lot that was near his house. And I took some of my favorite photos I think I've ever taken with the Talon here. And they were the ones that I used to finish off the disposable camera. From there, we decided to get dinner at a pizza place called Cicero's that Caden's worked at for a few years. When we were roommates at CMU, Caden used to tell me about Cicero's all the time, and I was excited to finally go there and experience it for myself. The food was super good, and it was cool to experience kind of a small local pizza joint like that. I thought it was interesting how their drink's choice was only Fago, as opposed to Coke or Pepsi products. I think it's kind of cool that they choose this drink that's bottled in Detroit and then have to ship it north. I'm a Fago fan myself, so I definitely appreciate it. The next day, we spent a bit of time driving around local areas looking for cool photo spots. Caden wanted to take me to one of his favorite beaches in Empire, Michigan, where I took this photo of the Talon by this lighthouse, and then we went to check out the beach. After that, we went to the Pierce Stocking Scenic Drive, which is a little loop that goes through the forest and near the Sleeping Bear Dunes. You have to pay to get in, and no one really drives over about 20 to 25 miles per hour. But it was a really scenic drive, and I'm glad that I had the talent to take for it. All right, I'll be honest, I forget exactly where this was, but we both wanted to check out this marina, and I took the opportunity to take some photos of the town by the boats and by the water. Seeing these photos, it really makes me wish that they turned out better than they did. From there, we decided to go to Caden's grandparents' place, which they have a rather large cherry farm. And if you don't know anything about Traverse City area or surrounding cities, they're very famous for growing their cherries there. Caden's grandparents were super nice. I'm glad that they let me into their home and let us explore a bit of their yard. I took the opportunity to take some photos of the town by the cherry trees, and once again, I wish that they turned out better than they did, but I'm glad I have something to remember this experience. Caden's grandpa also has this old green Ford truck that he's used on his farm for many years. To me, it's really cool that something so old still gets used for its intended purpose. After then, we decided to head back into town and visit our last stop before I had to get back. We stopped and took some photos along M22. Our last stop was a place called the Old State Hospital, which, as I understand it, used to be a mental hospital of some sort in the early 20th century. It's basically a large complex that half of it is still abandoned and half of it has been renovated and used for some other thing. When we were roommates at CMU, I remember Caden used to tell me about the Old State Hospital, and I always thought it'd be cool to explore the abandoned part, but we didn't really have time for that. It seems like the kind of place that'd be kind of creepy at nighttime, but as the sun was setting, it was just really cool to admire. We then went down a hiking trail and came across the graffiti tree, which it seems like a lot of local kids go to. It was a pretty cool thing just to check out. And as the sun started to set, I realized that it was time for me to get heading home. I'm super thankful that Caden let me stay at his house for this journey, and I'm glad that I was able to spend some time with him. I definitely want to go back and see him again and explore a bit of Northern Michigan too. I'm really glad that I was able to take the talent and make a bit of a memorable trip of this. Even though it was only just a few days, this is definitely something that I'd like to remember for months and years to come. The talent really had no issues over the trip. It developed a slight overheating issue when I got close to home, and then in the days to come, it ended up having some bad cooling system issues. But during the trip, it was pretty reliable. This trip really served as a bit of a proving ground for going on road trips with the talent. I'd love to take this car on more road trips, maybe even across multiple states. And even though this trip was only just across the state, it still proved that the Talon was fairly reliable, comfortable, and can be used on a road trip. I hope that this is the start of many more miles 
to put on the talon and many more trips to come.